So guys, finally, Tinubu's minister for power has come out to explain why he wants Nigerians to pay more for power. This is the power we hardly get, but they want to collect more money from Nigerians. We all know what we've been going through because of the subsidy remover. The prices of fuel and diesel are up and there is hunger in the land. Now they want to increase, you know, the, the cost for power. That is electricity. Listen to the reasons he's giving to Nigerians for that increase. It requires money for us to enhance these segments. It requires money to replace deteriorating equipment and gadgets, to reconduct, to erect new towers, and to even establish new plants, to repair the pipelines, to install boosters and compressors for adequate pressure. The monies are not coming because of lack of liquidity. So why should the ordinary citizens be the one to give the federal government money for these repairs and other things they said they want to put in, in place? Despite the hunger in the land, take a look at this. Investors are not coming because they could not see a line of sight of recovery of their investments. Not to talk of making profits. The bankers are not lending because it is not attractive to lenders. It is not bankable. Bankers cannot see a line of sight on how the money they lend to us will be repaid. So you see that this infrastructural deficit will can only be ref, can only be fixed if we improve liquidity in the sector. Then the issue of structural. Honorable Minister, can you tell Nigerians the key reasons why you actually want to hike the prices of electricity across Nigeria? Even when you know Nigerians hardly get light, tell us your reasons. Bitter truth that we also need to tell ourselves as Nigerians. We are all Nigerians. A few people are only privileged to sit on the high table here. We are on the same level. We must be able to talk the truth to ourselves. We don't have the culture of consumption management in this country in terms of power. Just because of the cheapness of the tariff we pay on power. A lot of people will come back from work. They want to have dinner or they want to play with their colleagues down the road. They will sit on the AC for the room to, to be cooling before they come back. Yes, some people will be going to work in the morning. A freezer has been left on for days. They will still leave it on when all the items in the freezer are already frozen. And five, six, eight hours of their absence will not make it to the freeze. They will still leave it. It will consume power. Just because we are not paying enough. We've all been overseas before. We know how conscious the power consumers are, are to consumption of electricity. Thank you very much. I will, I will round up soon. So, this will also enable us. Thank you very much. This will also enable us to manage our... So guys, you've seen what the minister has said. You have seen his reasons. Okay, now a northerner has some brilliant ideas for these, our clueless people in power. We all know that this government only believes in a Milokon. But when it comes to getting Nigerians who can get this job done, they, they, they are very, very, you know, slow in getting competent people in places like this. So it's all about giving these positions, I mean, juicy positions to people who don't even have solution to our challenges. Take a look at what this northerner has got to say. What is your expertise like? What have you done in the power sector? So Nigerians can have an understanding. In the private sector in this country, what are the possibilities? How many countries have you helped in generating power for? To date, 18 countries from very modern countries like Turkey that are fully industrialized to countries like Congo DRC where we're putting power into the mines. This is not, this is not witchcraft. This is not um, some kind of imaginary thing. We do this as a living. There are probably five com companies in the world that do what we do to put power where it's needed, embed it, and give results. My dear country doesn't believe in its own profit, so we get to sit there and just watch you know, but you've, you've experimented in the private yes, sector. Yes, we again. built one of the most modern dairy factories in the world today in Adamawa State. Since 2019, this factory has been running off renewables from my company, storage and solar. Hasn't had one day down, produces close to 150,000 liters of milk a day, generating 
um, cr- tremendous income for those in, in that area, Mayobel uh, and, and the Seburi uh, region of, um, of Adamawa State. You see the multiplier effects. And I'll tell you something. That thing has been on and running for, since 2018. Not one, not one government official from the last administration or this administration, whether in power or in the agro sector, has gone to have a look of what modernity what modernity can do, not just for an industry, but for the areas, the Fulani farmers that are now not moving their cows because we have to produce, take milk. I mean, you've got to sit down with Aminu Yako and, and listen to a young man with a brain that has a vision and implemented it with such poise that people from around the world, I've taken Saudi Arabian groups to go there and see it. I've taken companies from Turkey there to go in and we've replicated what he has done and what we have done with him in foreign countries. I mean, for me, this is where we lose ourselves. We're not enjoying what we are. Again, this Ad- Admirala yogurt in, 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 in um, uh, Adamawa, his power is nothing. He's taking it from the sun. His competitors are using generators. The price is going up every day. Who's making more money? This young man with the sophistication and the vision to look for renewables. Our country needs to take that kind of lesson. Let's not look at what they want to sell us. What's Siemens going to sell you? Old technology. What is Siemens doing today? It's turning to renewables. But it's going to sell you its old there technology. There is biomass, there is uh, solar. So many. I ran an agency in the United Nations, inter- Intergovernmental Renewable Energy Organization. And my job was to look at energy mixes. How do we bring renewables to help? This is the kind of mindset that you need to be able to engage in, but nobody wants to talk to you. I'm a Nigerian. I don't care what party I was in before. I'm a Nigerian. Politics is in fact over. We're talking about the lives and livelihood of our people. I have not met the minister of power because it's going to take me forever to try and figure that thing out. So I'll go private sector. I don't need the minister to build power. I don't need the minister to change the life of 7,000 people in Adama with one man who is under 40 years old. Who has been able to make millionaires out of 7,000 people in the last two years. Now... He's made more millionaires than the government has generated. I guarantee you that. And these are Fulani um, herdsmen. You've got the, if there was a national award, I want to give it to this guy. Mm. The system is broken. We need to fix it by adding an energy mix. And I'm here to proffer solutions. I don't want to come here and land blast um, our minister, um, who I think is just uh, you know, out of his depth. He does not understand the fundamentals of the power sector. And we need to change that by a differing energy mix. And it's a fundamental part of the breakdown and it's where we need to really make change. And the change is it's a very simple one. Um, if you look at what's happening, Yola in the northeast, which is an impoverished area, is paying more than Lagos in the southwest. How is that possible? You're paying, 100, you were paying 179 naira, and now it's gone up to 250 odd naira to an area where there is no economical value for that money. It should be less. And the only way you can do that is to understand that the power is in the south, and it's been wheeled to the, to the northeast, and they're paying a premium to move that power from the south to the northeast. We're playing, we're, we're putting the pieces on the table and just moving it around and Nigerians are going to suffer. Mm. So the system doesn't work it can't. right now. It's impossible. So let, 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 let's, let's, let's do the pieces and put it right. It's a jigsaw right now. Absolutely. Let's see how we can put them right. In trying to lay the issues on the table, you've identified tonight, you do not believe in Mr. Adelabo. Um, I mean, if you were president, maybe you would not appoint him. But the president saw something in him. He thinks that he can fix power. A former deputy governor of the Central Bank. Maybe he thinks, oh, this man has a magic wand. You said he doesn't have that depth to be able to do the job. But he's showing to Nigerians that he can. Maybe we should give him a chance to do it. But then, let's look at the indices on the table, uh, Mr. Ibrahim. First and foremost, is the fact that give us a sense of these principle of policy that let the rich be for the poor. That is what that policy and the increase look like. Does that make sense? Is that what is standard practice in other clients? This is not Sherwood Forest. It's not Robin Hood. You cannot take from the, from the rich to give to the poor. We're all poor in this nation. If you keep taxing those that are producing, that is going to trickle down to those that are consuming. You're, 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 it's a punitive measure that will affect every single person in this country. So it does not work. The so jig- asking those who can pay more to pay more doesn't make sense. No, because it's I have like to get my money back. Big, taxing the rich, more. absolutely. But no, it's not taxing the rich. It's you're, you're burdening the producers because that that tariff uh, vein is that twenty hours. Who gets twenty hours? Who gets twenty hours? I mean, that's a fallacy in itself. Twenty hours, twenty-four hours a day. It's never happened. You can't give me a year, a month, a week where you have twenty hours in this country anywhere. So we are augmenting power. So it does not work. Fundamentally, that is just a story. The other words to use, but it's rubbish. It doesn't work. So. 
what are the problems? I'm not here to, to, to figure out what his issue is. I'm here as a solution provider. And the jigsaw puzzle is very simple. You've got six geopolitical zones. Each one of these ge geopolitical zones in this country has a, an incredible, naturally given, power-generating, um, you know, the, the prospects of power in each of those zones is enormous. Let's look at the Northeast. Incredible sun. Focus on solar. Northwest, solar and wind corridor. The, the middle belt of this country, this, the, the North Central. Incredible hydro. South, gas, high, um, bio, biofuels, it's all there. Now, we need to put that into an energy mix that comes to the country, not relying on 4,000. We need to do something that makes that those naturally given um, energy providers um, a way to, to, to contribute to the power of this country. It'll increase jobs. It'll, it, it'll make inflation disappear to, to levels that are about 31% inflation. That means in four years, we'll devalue our currency by 100%. This is an emergency structure that we must think of right now, and we're not but, but, we're looking at it differently. Yeah, that, Prince Malik, uh, that those who will say uh, at this point that we, in fact, do not have a generation problem. In fact, we're generating, and we cannot even use as much as what we generate. Absolutely. There is a gap between generation, uh, distribution, and transmission. Okay. We, we can't even, the consumers cannot get as much as what we Require. generate. Yes. Yeah. So it's not a, at the moment, it's not a problem of generation. Mm -hmm. It's a much of uh, the problem, the technologies, and the means of which we can get the power uh, being generated, uh, being in the pot, out to the people. Okay, so we understand. We have 24,000 megawatts installed capacity. We generate... 12,000. We distribute 4,000. What a waste. The discos can reject power because they cannot push it around on the, on the grid. There are solutions. We can store power using energy storage systems. Every single, every single substation in this country should have storage units, which are lithium-based, which Nigeria is rich in, storage units at each one of these. So when you reject power, that 12,000 can be stored. When the grid goes down, you re that generated power like a power bank, you release it onto the grid. Look, this is technology that's available today. I'm doing it in other places. We're talking to government here. Nobody wants to listen. The fundamentals are there. We are not adding the, 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 the innovation of, of today to make this thing work. We should be at 24,000 megawatts, not a problem. Within 18 months, we can be at 12,000. Distributed, distributed, 12,000 megawatts. Then you can add all these prices. But right now, you're, 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 you're giving me... Uh, uh, here's another crazy plot. The discos, who owns them? The federal government owns 40% of these discos, and we blame the discos. The government owns them. Jenkos, government owns 40%, and we blame them. They own them. Distribution is all government. Why are we playing this game? But there is a new law that are being passed, which is supposed to unbundle. Uh, we've been unbundling, and that's where the Jenkos, the discos, and all of you came from. Uh, well, the unbundling has come to the point that it has decentralized some sections of the power. There's still one that is residual with uh, and resident with uh, the powers of resident with the federal government. But there is one, there, has, uh, there is other parts that the state governments and other parts of the uh, stakeholders can also use. So when we think that that power, that legal instrument will help Nigerians to be able to get more power, but well, it doesn't look like it's working yet. The states need to invest. The states don't have money. The, the states don't generate income. The states wait for fact, get the money, and then they spend it. Which state, apart from Lagos, generates its own income? There's none. You all wait for that. If you put power, if, you, if I'm looking at this from a governor, as a governor, I want to take that money, create an industrial park, put power, invite industry, generate uh, income for my state so that I don't even rely just on the federal handout. We're, we're, we're in a handout. We're palliatives for the state governor. We're, 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 that's what we do. Nobody is sitting there fundamentally looking at the inflationary issues of what is the fundamental problem of this country, and it is power. Look, there are three columns here. Inflation, devaluation, and income generation. And on all three, we fail. We must fix those three pillars because the inflation is out of hand. And no, no, you're not telling me or you're telling me at the end of the day, be patient, and your, your policies do not give me confidence. Um, we need to change the policy, or if you can't change the policy, change the individual. Get people who understand how to fix power in this country. Look, I love this country. This is, where I was, this is where I was born. This is where I'm going to die. At the end of the day, we should add our innovation, our brain power to this government. If you take it in the wrong way, then shame on you as far as I'm concerned. We need to be able to, uh, to at least give policies that allow the government to say, okay, states, generate your own power but you don't have the money to do that. Go out and you can, you can look for investment from third party um, uh, investors to come into your state. The enabling environment has been set, but the, the states cannot afford it. And guess what? These discos that we're talking about, the infrastructure are owned by the states. You look at a state budget, you'll see transformers. They'll pay for it and then <laughs> AEDC or whatever will come and charge you. There is no overview. NERC is overstretched. There is no um, policy overview or tariff overview um, uh, commission that's there. 
we, there's a lot to be done, but we're still only dealing with 4,000 megawatts. 4,000. So, and I'll put you right on the spot. Uh, I, I do that every time when I want solutions. And for us, I mean, I'm imagining that this is an, almost an impossible task to fix power. And uh, we've had how many transitions from 1999. Uh, there are those who blame the former government to say they spent $20 billion and there is no power. There are those, and we've been spending government after government on monies uh, that were spent on fixing power. 1999 up until now, those who were born probably had gone to university and gone back and graduated, yet were not able to fix the power. We're still talking about 4,000, 5,000 5, megawatts. South Africa, Egypt are doing better in terms of consumption and the kind of production and power in the power sector. Let me put you right on the spot. If you were President, uh, President Turubu today, what would you do differently from what we see today? Because I imagine that do we really even have those who have the brain power or the knowledge of fixing our energy problem in this country? Well, from what I know, and the expertise, and, the, and, and what I've done, I can only say that there's a fundamental way to fix it. And it's a gradual way. You must build a stable foundation for power to be able to grow. So I would go to storage immediately. I would make it my Marshall Plan to put in, as I said, in every substation, I would put storage. And, I would, and it would require me doing an audit to see where is industry, where does industry need power? And I'll fundamentally agree with, if it's 100, 400, put storage there. Because we're producing enough power to store. Then you can charge a tariff that's high, but I know I'm getting 100% of that power that I'm required to have so I can be competitive. If we're not competitive, we cannot export goods. If we cannot export goods, inflationary issues will come to, to bear. Now, the grid needs to be fixed. We have one spinal grid. If you take that grid off, the country's in darkness. We see it. We've seen it 98 times. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Most countries have multiple grids. Multiple the minister was saying that they have uh, a means of a backup when the grid falls out. Or it takes a, an average of several hours to get the grid back on. Mm -hmm. Well, and so the nation is in darkness at one time. And so there's those who say it's a security issue also when the nation is thrown to darkness at, at once. You're actually giving your enemies some, some vision as to what Nigeria is. We're lucky that we're all IPPs. We're all independent power producers. But if I'm having to diesel my home and, and, and with noise pollution and, 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 and you know, all that stuff because you're going to wait nine hours to back me up, what am I paying taxes for? Why am I paying such a high tariff? Why would I pay 259 naira per kilowatt hour when I could just go buy batteries, put it in my house, put storage, use the gen when I want to use it, and go off the grid? I can go off the grid. I'm off the grid. Most of my four clients... Years now? Four years. Most of the industries... Look, this is not... What have you done that can, as, as evidence, as a testimony, to show that it is possible here in Nigeria? You know, I keep using Adamawa as my um, example, but even with the grid prices, it's even now fundamentally clear to me that we have got it wrong. If my client, uh, Admirala Farms, uh, put together their power using the grid, they would be, could have gone from 179 naira to 259 naira in the northeast. If he was in Lagos, he'd be paying 79 naira for that same power. He's creating jobs. Now, what's his competitive advantage? He is sitting there producing power from the sun, at about 70 naira per kilowatt hour, constantly, every day, every day. For how many years now? 200, uh, since 2018. And you cannot, you, as I said, no government official has gone to see what the future looks like. There is storage there. We're storing sun, sun power. We're not storing grid power. Now, if you're storing grid power and releasing it in a very professional, smart grid fashion, you would be able to move that 12,000 megawatts to different parts of the nation. I would create industrial parks where industry would go and settle so it can relieve the grid. And then the Nigerian population would have more power to do so it. So this is an industrial hub in Adamawa, like you said. It's an EPZ that... in Adamawa. Mm -hmm. And now c companies from Lagos are moving to this place because he's got power to, he's got power to spare. Look, the northeast of this country can generate enough power to, to, to read, I mean, to just make it look like Dubai. The sun in Maduguri Kano is scorching enough to, to generate enough power, like you've said. Uh, 2,700 per square meter. Lagos is about 1,700. England's at about 1,100. We're double what England is doing in the Northeast. And you know what? That power is sitting scorching earth when it can be generating power. And the issue I'm saying Wasting is away. the energy mix has to come into bear. The, the, the government needs to decide that it wants to create power for its people. And then look at the middle belt, hydro, Northeast, wind and solar. I'm um, sorry, Northeast, solar. Northwest, wind and solar. South, focus on the infrastructure. Look, I would also do one more thing. You asked me a question about if I was president. Why would I subsidize the consumer? I would want to subsidize the investor that is going to come in and put in a pipeline so that the consumer gets it at a, at a lower price. I would subsidize the infrastructure, not to, to, to give handouts, the palliatives to people. Because it, you, you, you have to remove that palliative at some point. Marie Antoinette said, if you cannot give your people bread, give them cake. And if you can't give them cake, you have a revolution coming. 
we don't pray for a revolution. We pray, for, we, we, we pray that the government have insight and say, okay, I understand what these guys are doing. Come to the table. Let's see how we fix this situation. No, 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 I mean, do people in power realize that they're generating power and taking it out of the country? <laughs> We're selling, well, it's foreign exchange generation. So I, I, I did, but we blocked to Niger. But at the end of the day, look, the policy is broken. And we're now adding so another saying, insult I mean, to injury. I, I, I mean, I'm saying this. The reason why I'm saying this, and I'm trying to get a word out of your mouth, to let Nigerians also know what is possible. And the fact that this is not an impossibility. That there are private interests who are generating from the sun coming down on the Nigerian soil. And that same power generated here in Nigeria is being sold to other country. Can That's you expatriate on that? Expatriate on that? Well, the grid was built when the, 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 the supply in Tunisia and Cameroon was when we had the same power many years ago. So that was built and, and it's still used and you know now we know there's a subsidy so for me it's, it's just farcical to see that we had a subsidy when we didn't have enough power and we're selling that power to countries to generate income it doesn't make sense 230 million people here need that power and the only way you're going to do it is to take your agbada off sit down and decide you're going to focus on generating power embedding power the grid is down it's 4,000. Siemens is coming to augment that to 10,000. It's still not going to do much. You said that Siemens technology is almost outdated. It, we're, we're not using... Siemens has gone to renewables, and we're taking their old technology to augment our system. Okay, the grid needs implementation, but forget that. Embed power into the states, into the areas where you need using renewable... Nigeria is full of renewable methods. Use them, and then use that to reduce the... You know, it's a supply and demand issue. The dependence on the, on the grid. The grid is not going to save Nigeria. Innovation, forward thinking implementation of global best practices will change the way Nigeria is and it'll industrialize us, reduce inflation, and that push for energy that we take from refineries and from gas and all that. We need to sell that and, and rather we, we should use it um, for the income generated for the country and not the product itself. We need to get off that, that high yeah. of, uh, of so guys sometimes we keep wondering if the problem of Nigeria is mainly because these are our leaders keep putting people who have no clue you know about the position they are having so guys you can agree with me that one of the challenges nigeria has is you know having the wrong people in sensitive positions i mean it's all about a milocon give them the position provided they are men from my tribe provided they are men from my clan provided they are men from within my political circle it does not matter whether they know what they are going to do or not. This is what we've seen with this administration. So you can imagine if you are a northerner, you are from another tribe, and you've got this, you know, these intelligent ideas to bring to the table. You might not even have the chance to do that because you do not belong to the Emilocon clan. So you can see how Nigeria is being moved backward because we have the wrong people managing the affairs of this country. I think it is high time Nigerians start speaking up, getting the right people, you know, to do this job, not getting there and you are looking for people that will help you win the election and people that helped you during the election or during the campaign or people who have been your close associates in politics and you want to give them position just to compensate them even when they've got no idea. So you can see that, yes, the minister may have said some brilliant things, but the implementation, do you think he's smart about the way he wants to go, you know, about the, the implementation of all this is going to hurt the people who, have already, who are already wounded. Nigerians are already wounded, going by the cost of living in the country. Now you want to hike the price of electricity and you are telling the people that is because you need money to fix some things. Nigerians are now the one to, you know, pay for all this. And at the end of the day, they will still charge you again the second time for the electricity you'll be consuming. It's not as if you are going to invest so that they are going to give you free electricity. No, they want you to bring the money to get all these things working. And then when it start working, you are still going to be paying. That is charging the people or surcharging the people double. So guys, this is what we keep saying about you know, this administration that don't even know what they are doing. Let me know what you have to say about this in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. Thank you.